I think a lot of it's dependent on us as, as sort of ind industry professionals in terms of the way we design and execute on these co-living developments and staying true to the, the tenets or the, the principles of co-living. I think if we, if we get that right, I can really see co-living becoming mainstream and, and a major asset class. Um, and I think this, uh, as we pivot towards housing as a service and co-living being the industry leader in that sense, I think 10 years from now, we could be at a place where co-living as a tag has sort of become less important. And, and this is really permeated throughout the housing market where we see housing throughout really being delivered as a service. So I, I, I can see the two blending into one uh, over the medium to long term. Exciting. Christine here with another fun episode of the weekly Co-Living Code show. I'm your host. I am also the founder of Kindred, which is a global directory and booking platform for the co-living industry. And first wanted to, of course, give a quick thank you to our sponsor of this show. We actually had them on last week, so you can check out that interview. It is ISL Furnishings, and they are a brand created through Interspace Living, and they are all about creating exciting spaces where design meets function. Interspace parlayed its success in commercial grade unit furniture and conceived this elevated offering for co-living spaces. They believe strongly in the industry and already work with some of the larger companies like Quarters and Star City. And they were founded with the mission to bring your brand to life. Their goal is to revolutionize the unit furniture experience. Driven by creativity, ISL Furnishings believes that interiors should inspire brilliance. Every venue has its own voice. They exist to clarify that voice, interpret your brand vision, and deliver quality on time every time. Christine with the Co-Living Code show. And this week, we finally bring on somebody from the UAE, from Dubai. And it's Bass Ackerman. He's the founder of Hive CoLive, which is the UAE's first real estate developer solely focused on the development and management of co-living communities, breaking away from the typical build to sell development approach so prevalent in the UAE. Hive CoLive is setting itself apart by following an innovative housing as a service approach to deliver an all exclusive, flexible and convenient co-living solution, which won't break the bank with their flagship 173 bed co-living project scheduled for a December 2021 opening in Dubai the Hive team has ambitious plans to expand across the UAE and wider Gulf region to serve the growing demand for flexible all-inclusive living solutions so great episode we did keep it at about 20 minutes I would love 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 to hear feedback if you guys prefer the shorter interviews versus the longer ones I know a lot of them have been getting up to about an hour Hour. So uh, definitely let us know and let's launch right into the episode. So I am here with Bass with Hive CoLive in the UAE, which this is the first time we're bringing on somebody from Dubai. I visited Dubai. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. It's probably been like five years. So I need to go back. Um, but welcome to the show, Bass. Thanks, Christine. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, really excited to be on the show. Awesome. So let's start with what you guys are building. I know you guys are building from the ground up. Um, you guys just, you've been working on it for two years, right? And then when did you start construction? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a long, uh, long slog. Uh, we started working on it in 2017, doing research, um, development, uh, design. Uh, construction on our flagship development uh, started in uh, June of this year. Uh, so it's going well. Um, the, the initial enabling work's been completed. Main contract is working and uh, we're on track for completion end of 2021. Nice. Oh, so you guys have work, been working on this technically for about four years, right? 2017? Yeah, so, so about mid-2017, we started working on it. Um, we closed funding uh, mid-2019 um, and then we went through the whole uh, site acquisition uh, design process. And uh, then spades hit site uh, in about June of this year. So uh, it's been a it's been a long but uh, rewarding journey. And 173 beds that you guys right. are are building from ground up, and you're going to be done. So from start to finish, it's about a year and a half. Build. Yes, it's about it's about 18 month uh, 18 month build. Uh, we're about six uh, six months into it at the moment. And uh, yes, it's a it's a ground ground up development, uh, purposefully designed. Um, from scratch uh, as a co-living development um, and uh, Greenfield, uh, which is what we predominantly specialize in. That is super fast, but I know you guys have a lot of workers out there oh, yeah. that build oh, very yeah. quickly. Yeah. 
Dream <laughs> big. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I love that. I love that. I know. I remember again when I was there. There was no sidewalk one day, and then the very next day there was this beautiful sidewalk built. I was like, yeah. That's, That's it's impressive. It's impressive how they do it, aren't you? And um, it's a well-oiled machine. So uh, yeah, we're excited for it, and uh, good to get it going by the end of next year. And then where are you from originally? We forgot to mention that. Um, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, um, so I studied out there, and then uh, as soon as I graduated, moved over here, and I've been, um, I think that was 2011, and then uh, I've been working in real estate uh, ever since here in the UAE, um, so entire professional career, really, in the UAE. Nice, and then obviously you plan on staying there, is it indefinitely, or... Uh, yeah, at the moment, we just take it as it comes, I suppose. Uh, I'm building a business out here, so uh, we'll take it one step at a time. Um, it's a great place uh, for expatriates, the UAE, uh, really welcoming, um, great place to live. Uh, it's safe, it's efficient, infrastructure is second to none. Um, so, so we love it here, well rooted here, um, and exciting prospect. And I would love for you to kind of explain to everybody watching, listening to the show, like built to sell, which I know is big mm. over there versus housing as a, what you guys call housing as a service. Sure. sure. Yeah, I think the, the UAE um, as a market is relatively young. Um, real estate really took off um, during the early 2000s. And um, what you find out here is predominantly developers uh, follow a build to sell uh, model, uh, and that's predominantly off plan. Um, so developers will uh, start a scheme uh, constructed about 20% and then start selling the units, uh, mostly to regional investors uh, from Saudi Arabia, India, Pakistan, the UK. Um, and so most of these products traditionally has been pitched fairly high end um, and in more recent times sort of towards the lower end. Uh, but I think the important point there is that most of it is really designed and marketed towards investors uh, who will then own and rent it out. Um, we really um, are conscious of the tra changing demographics. Uh, the UAE has a very, very young transient uh, expatriate market. About 90% of people are expatriates, uh, of which 40% of those are under the age of 35. So it's extremely young. Um, people have a short-term mentality. They come here for two or three years uh, and then move back home. And so for us, really, um, it's about how do we reposition uh, housing? At the moment, it's, it's really commoditized. It's really sold as a product uh, to investors. And for us, it's about repositioning that as, as a service. Um, and that's playing into this, the broader space as a service concept. Um, and so, yeah, so if we follow a build to rent model. Uh, so we design these buildings, we develop them. Uh, and then we retain ownership. And not only do we retain the ownership, but we also actively manage these assets. For me, it's so important. Um, you can't separate that from the co-living concept is to, to have an operator that really can execute on the vision. And, and that's why we chose a build to rent model. Um, so yeah. And the, what, what's the reason again for uh, the built to sell model? Like where, why were they doing so much of that? It's just predominantly because you need less equity um, mm. to, to go down that route. So essentially, developers can um, get away with raising about 20% of the overall development cost. And then by selling these units off plan and gradually collecting um, the sales proceeds, they can then self-fund uh, the developments, which mm. was one of the reasons why a lot of projects uh, went on hold uh, or were canceled during the great financial um, sort of collapse of the late uh, 2000s. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's just, it comes down to funding. Got it. And then let's see here, I had another question. Oh, the, the location. So which, which area of Dubai yeah. is it in? Uh, so we in uh, an area called Jumeirah Village Circle, uh, JVC for short. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what, how well you know Dubai, uh, but if you've been to the marina, um, it's about 10 minutes inland from the marina. Um, so great proximity uh, to JLT and the marina, which are predominantly expatriate uh, locations. Uh, you'll find young uh, Western expatriates in those areas. And so for us, proximity to those were, were really important. No, yeah, and the marina is where I, where I stayed, and that was such expatriate, a great expat yeah. area, entrepreneurs. It's so buzzing. It's, yeah. It's a buzzing, buzzing area. No, I love it. And then let's see here. So I know you guys are looking to expand. What areas do you guys think you'll go into in the UAE after Dubai? Sure. Yeah, we, we based in Dubai and we think there's a, there's a lot of room for further development in Dubai itself. Um, so our immediate focus is Dubai. Um, Abu Dhabi is our, our capital and our neighboring uh, city. 
Uh, so we we talking to a couple of players in Abu Dhabi as well. And then I think from there, really, the natural progression for us would be into Saudi Arabia, uh, which is a booming uh, country at the moment, attracting a lot of foreign uh, foreign direct investment and really repositioning uh, their economy uh, away from uh, the traditionally reliant oil sector. And I think uh, I think that would be the next natural progression for us. And then you kind of talked earlier about, you know, this, a lot of it's like long-term stays and mm-hmm. you're shifting that model, obviously housing as a service. What's your guys' mm-hmm. minimum? Cause you're exactly right. People go for a month, three months to live. Mm-hmm. Um, what's mm-hmm. your guys' your minimum stay? Yeah. So, so we, we fundamentally more focused on long-term stays uh, just because we are really focused on trying to uh, create this community and uh, foster collaboration and interaction. And we don't feel short-term stays are that conducive to it. At the same time, uh, we have a 30-day uh, minimum stay. Um, so uh, we have annual lease agreements, but uh, you can cancel them penalty-free at 30 days notice. So your minimum stay is essentially 30 days. Flexibility in this market is extremely important to our end users. A lot of people are, are working here and uh, their living solution is tied to their employment and uh, working or employment visas. And so flexibility is so, so key for us. And then, we're, you know, what's, you know, that makes sense. Are you guys going to charge extra if they want to do that short term lease, do you think? No, no. Okay. It's, it's, it's the same model for us. Ideally, we're trying to encourage people yeah. to stay with us for at least a year. But if they want to, uh, if circumstances um, dictate uh, that they can't, uh, 30 days penalty free, penalty free cancellation. Awesome. And then what's your, what, it, what, what are you most excited about, I guess, on your launch when you guys open? I think it's just really um, uh, introducing that concept of housing as a service to this market. Uh, I moved here when I was uh, 22. And uh, Dubai can be a really challenging market for young professionals who arrive uh, in Dubai, might be their first job, they might be on a shoestring budget. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to, to deliver a product that really um, provides a home to those people, a uh, plug and play solution, all inclusive, uh, focus not only on affordability and convenience, but really also a sense of place. Uh, you know, a lot of people uproot and they leave family and friends behind when they move to Dubai. Uh, so loneliness can be an issue. And I think what, we, what we're trying to do with Hive is really um, hit all those uh, pain points traditionally uh, faced by young expats moving here. And then, you, like, I would love for you to describe, like, the lobby area. Are you guys going to have co-working space for the bill? Oh, and how many floors yeah. is it? So we've got two basements, and then we've got a ground floor, which is completely communal. So the ground floor really for us is the living room of the building, the way we see it. Um, and then on top of that, we have five, um, five stories, which are all residential. Um, and uh, to answer your question, ground floor for us, as I mentioned, it's, it's really the heart uh, of the building. Um, and uh, we have a combination of amenities on there. We have a, a small cafe um, that caters to the wider community, but also uh, acts as a sort of cafeteria for our residents. Uh, we have a convenience store. Uh, inside the actual lobby of the building, it's a, it's a variety of breakout spaces. So we have co-working uh, amenities in there. Again, that's all included in, in the, uh, the monthly uh, lease agreement. Uh, co-working, we've mul- got a multi-purpose room. We've got a screening room in there. Um, obviously have a gym, uh, wellness center. Um, yeah, we've gone for a, a slightly different approach in terms of we've got a a much larger multifunctional area that can be adapted for different uses. We feel that it's it's more sustainable over the longer term, and it also allows us for allows for us to really adapt that and mold it around the residents of the building. Um, so we're excited about that, which is it's a slightly different approach to what a lot of other operators have opted for, which which sometimes tends more heavily towards the sort of dedicated um, spaces. And then um, can you and that's awesome like you guys covered everything there um so it's kind of like you said it's all inclusive and everything's in the same building what do the actual units look like yeah so we've got a combination of units um we are focused mainly on private units um so studios and one bedroom apartments Uh, we do also have shared accommodation in the form of two and four bedroom apartments our uh, multi-person apartments are all designed specifically for sharing, so ensuite uh, bedrooms, single occupancy bedrooms. Um, and we've really tried to strike a balance between efficient private spaces and large breakout areas. So, for instance, our, our smallest unit is a studio unit, which is around 30 square meters. 
um, which we feel is uh, is an appropriate size unit for someone moving to Dubai and wanting to stay in our building uh, for the longer term. Uh, and so we've really tried to size it appropriately. And do you guys have like efficiency kitchens? What do the kitchens look like in those studios and the other one? Yeah. So what we've opted for is each unit essentially has a, a small kitchenette uh, or pantry. So if you want to do some basic cooking, um, if you don't feel social, uh, you can do it in the convenience of your own apartment. Uh, and then we've opted for uh, a single large uh, chef's kitchen, which is also on the ground floor. Um, and so that's really where you can entertain, uh, do some serious cooking. Um, uh, so yeah, that's the approach we've gone for. And obviously you guys aren't you guys aren't open yet. So COVID, I'm wondering how did that affect construction at all? Did they de- did it delay? Did it do anything at all for you guys? We were actually really fortunate uh, in the timing of of, uh, of this, uh, as fortunate as one can be in, in, under the circumstances. And uh, we we had just gone to site um, at the time, and so we've been slightly affected, but uh, we've adapted quite quickly. Uh, we've not faced significant delays to to the construction. Uh, but for us, it's really uh, looking at the design, uh, as we're fortunate enough uh, that the building's still under construction, to really say, in a post-COVID world, uh, does this still stack up uh, fundamentally? And that's a great that's a great next question. Did you guys implement like a different type of air filtration systems? Is it like anything to kind of prepare for that? For us, it was really more in terms of the, the actual space planning of the building to make sure that it still, uh, it still uh, stacks up. Uh, I think one of the things that we, we all realized coming out of COVID, or, or for me personally, was this inherent desire for people to really want to socialize. Uh, obviously, in a post-COVID world, we have to look at how do you balance that with people's safety, um, personal safety and hygiene. And so we feel like we've struck a, a good balance between providing people with private spaces where they can work and live uh, in the comfort of their own safe private space um, with the the greatest social spaces where people can actually connect and socialize with other people as and when they feel uh, it might be appropriate. Um, I think also one of the things that we're currently still reevaluating is um, how do we adapt the building to maybe look at more flexible working spaces. We already catered for it. But I think in a post-COVID world, that, that's also something that, that's taking on increased importance. Um, work from home, uh, flexible working, um, I think we'll, we'll have a much bigger uptake of those spaces than we initially anticipated probably a year ago. Yeah, and I think you nailed it earlier Earlier when you said the loneliness issue. And I mean, yeah. people that lived alone, I can't even imagine, you know, I being quarantined imagine. for six months and, you know, working from home so you don't see your coworkers. Um, so that's really great that you guys are, are kind of helping facilitate that a little bit more. Absolutely. And I, I think also, you know, we were lucky in that we our focus was predominantly on private apartments. So we weren't that heav- heavily reliant on people sharing bedrooms, which I think really becomes a safety safety issue. Um, and so I think it's, it's a great combination to have the, the, the flexibility of an affordable private space um, with the added benefit uh, of great amen- amenities where you can socialize and connect. And what is the average age that you anticipate, the demographic and the ages? Yeah, I mean, for us, we, I'll tend to say it's probably late 20s. Uh, we've designed for sort of 25 to 35, broadly speaking. Obviously, that's not hard barriers. Um, but I think realistically, we sort of mid to late 20s is what we're anticipating. And then is that expat? Like what ratio do you think that'll be of locals and expats? I, I, I I'll say it's almost purely, it's likely to be almost purely expatriate. Um, the, the, the demographic makeup is, is 90% expatriate, 10% locals, uh, and the locals tend to, to have their own um, sort of housing typologies. And so we, we're expecting predominantly expatriates, uh, which will be a combination of Western expatriates and their more regional um, Gulf expatriates as well. And it's really you, a melting pot. Yeah, no, that, those are interesting. You said that's 90% expats? In the yeah, area? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a lot. Um, mm. And then how often do you guys uh, plan on having events? Uh, what type of events? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're really excited about that side of it. Um, for us, it's really about how do, you, how do you design and manage a building to really foster that sense of community. And whilst it's early days for us, pre-operational, we really focused on how do we uh, act as a catalyst and as a facilitator um, for people to really come together and connect and socialize as opposed to us um, 
implementing or organizing events in a top-down fashion. Uh, so we really want to act as really facilitators uh, in that sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we'll play our part as, as part of that. And uh, we intend to have a, a variety of events on a weekly basis uh, and really also looking at how do we plug into the, the wider community as opposed to being a self-contained entity. Nice. And um, Bass, I have one more question for you. And I love that you came on because I'm, I'm trying to think, I think we've only had, we've had very few people on that are, you know, getting ready to open. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think you're the largest, the most units that have come on sure. that you guys are, are building. Um, and you're only six months into the, the ground up. So, so thank sure. you for coming on. That was awesome to kind of share where you're at yeah. and your game for your future game plan for launch. Um, so yeah. my last question is, where do you see co-living as an industry in 10 years? Mm. Yeah, interesting question. Um, I think a lot of it's dependent on us as, as sort of ind industry professionals in terms of the way we design and execute on these co-living developments and staying true to the, the tenets or the, the principles of co-living. I think if we, if we get that right, I can really see co-living becoming mainstream and, and a major asset class. Um, and I think this, uh, as we pivot towards housing as a service and co-living being the industry leader in that sense, I think 10 years from now, we could be at a place where co-living as a tag has sort of become less important. And, and this is really permeated throughout the housing market where we see housing throughout really being delivered as a service. So I, I, I can see the two blending into one uh, over the medium to long term. Exciting. It's super exciting. I can't wait to visit when you guys open. Absolutely. We'd love to have you over. Uh, as soon as we're done and open, uh, please come on over. I'll come for the launch. That would be that would be fun. Perfect. That's we'll awesome. Be and that's a great month, Perfect. the end of the year, December. The weather's Absolutely. a lot better. December time. <laughs> exactly. That's the time of year to come. For sure. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on the show this week. I really appreciate Absolute. it. Absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Yep. Appreciate it. Of course. Cool. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out today's episode. If you want to learn more about co-living, you could check out my book on Amazon, The Co-Living Code. And of course, if you're looking for the perfect software to power your co-living concept, check out kindred.io, K-N-D-R-D.io. And again, a quick thank you to Matterport, our partner with a 3D virtual tour. It is possible to fill your vacancies up to 30% faster.